Slowly drank lots of cognac, lots of wine, lots of wine. Do you have some port? Many, many bottles of port, mate. Many got, got many bottles of port seen off. Nice, man. No cheese, I'm afraid. Oh, mate, vegan I'll cheese. Just a little bit, but no, no, uh, no, no, no cheese. Yeah. I did, mate. I had cheese. Yeah. I had whiskey. Port. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Went all out, mate. I went went a full selection, mate. Even went round to your house and uh, had a little dabble in did your Did you switch. now? <laughs> did you? You popped in. <laughs> <laughs> a little taster of each whiskey. <laughs> a little taster, a little taster. A little yeah. Christmas. Anyway, welcome to 2021. Welcome back to the show. Here we go. We're going to be having some fun conversations today. I mate. mean, this year is going to be fun. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, then you need to subscribe right now so you can get the subscription notifications of this channel on YouTube throughout 2021. Dropping some knowledge bombs, helping you defeat the challenges that are brought potentially by our predictions that were made in the last episode. If you didn't hear that, go check that out. It was a good episode, man. It was a good episode. It talked about predictions for the new year, what's going to be going down, and uh, how you can pre prepare yourself for what is to come. That was good, man. Sweet. Exciting moment. It is. So, like George says, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that good stuff, and let's get into it. Let's get into today's episode. You've got some interesting news for us today, James. Yeah, it's kind of going back to last year, if you will, but it's an exciting time for the British entrepreneur. Oh, the British entrepreneur. Yeah, as you can tell, we are British. We Jolly good, sir. Jolly good. Jolly good. Cup of tea. Yes, but anyway, Ben Francis, you guys probably know him better as the owner of Gymshark, the founder of Gymshark. He was awarded uh, Entrepreneur of the Year by EY, formerly Ernst & Young. We just wanted to take a second to celebrate what he's done. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty badass. Yeah, we spoke about him before when he signed the $1 billion contract, or whatever yeah. it was, yeah. on the podcast. Was it several billion? I can't uh, remember. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot. I was thinking like 1.2 billion or something. Yeah, several zeros. Yeah. So anyway, um, we just wanted to appreciate Ben. Well done on what you've done for the fitness industry. It's incredible. Yeah. And also as an entrepreneur, it's absolutely mind blowing what he's done. Yeah. Super inspiring. Super inspiring. Taking risk. Take risk. Risk. Big time risk. Risk. That's the that's the that's the theme of 2021. Risk. Do you met? Have you? Did you ever play Risk, the board game? Oh. I always wanted to play, and I never got to play. Apparently, it lasted longer than Monopoly, which I can't. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, no, mate. I've never played it then. Yeah. Still be playing it today, mate. Yeah, yeah. It never started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still playing it now. Yeah, too much risk, mate. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> next year at Christmas I'll play Risk. The point is with Ben Francis, uh, some of you guys might not know this story, but when he built Gymshark, it started as a uh, screen printing t shirt company. Yeah, 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 yeah. George is not going to tell his story. Wasn't it was supplements, no? Yes. He started selling selling supplements, selling supplements and then, then transitioned into screen printing that's for t shirts. That's it. That's it yeah. So the way you see Gymshark today was a screen printing company, yeah. but he did yeah. do supplements before. And um, when he started doing the screen printing, he set up a booth at the expo in the UK known as uh, Body Power, which is the big expo. And he managed to rope his friends into it who all had their final uh, study, um, not study, exams at university. And they all bailed on it to come and help him set up the booth. Savage. However, I believe all of them had a part of the company. Yeah. It was like a, what was it, 2 to 5% each or something? Yeah, yeah. So they're now obviously all multi-millionaires yeah. after that contract was signed. So easy, easy money. But the point is, if you want to do something great, you have to take risk. There you go. Like, otherwise, here's the thing, guys. If you want to build a business, especially in this year, 2021, things are going to get more and more challenging, more competitors in the marketplace. If you're willing to face the challenging, uncomfortable conversations and do the things that are really outside your comfort zone, you'll be very successful. If you're trying to protect every single downside, then you're never going to be able to make it this year. Yeah, if you're trying to do things differently, testing out new things, pushing the boundaries of what's possible. That's what's going to, that's that's where risk is found. That's where you have to take risks to potentially reap the reward, which is the word potential means that, that that's why it's a risk because it's not guaranteed. You know, being willing to, to dive in and do those different things, the weird things, the things that people are going to tell you to do, uh, to not do. People are going to say, you're a fucking lunatic for doing that stuff. You're crazy. You're an idiot. You're dumb. Go back to school. I got that. Yep. Got all of that. And, uh, but it's always interesting. Whenever someone makes that comment to you, look at where they are in their life. Always look at that. And also look at the relationship to you. Because more often than not, they're just trying to protect you. They're probably a friend or a parent. Yeah. And they just want you to be safe. Yeah. And in their heads, safety means happiness. But I think we all know that that isn't true. There's a lot of people who are in very safe jobs who beneath the surface are desperately unhappy. Dying. Yeah. So you have to have a level, level of uncertainty in your life to really live a fulfilling life and 
ultimately it comes down to taking risks. So. Risks. Risk. Yes. Risk. That's the word of the year. All right, mate. That's risk. it. Risk is your buzzword. Can of we say risk in every episode this year? No, no. I'm not going to commit to it. All righty. So speaking of risks, talking about uh, diving in, in the deep end. Diving in the deep. Remote Fit Pro of the Week, Mr. Will Gerlin. Congratulations, Will. Yeah, the confetti cans are going off. Bosh. 11 days since joining the program, made my first £2,000 sale today. Crushed it. Boom. What have you got to say about that? £2,000. There you go. Uh, again, more of these more of these opportunities to, to show you guys that you don't have to charge $47 or £47 for an online program. Let's do the maths on that. 2,000 divided by 47 is 42 programs. Yeah, you don't have to sell 42 programs. You can just <laughs> sell one to the right person with the specific problem that matches the specific offer that you've got to get them. Nailed it. And as we keep saying, what well, we did last year anyway, if you guys want to get more trainings on that, join the Facebook group. The link there is down go. below. There you go. It still exists. You know, it's not going away. It it's might be a new year, better. but the group is even better. Yep. More so and more go. content going in there. George has even shown his face. Hey. He doesn't know that yet, but he might Magic. be doing it. Who knows? Magic. Anyway, the reason we wanted to uh, celebrate Will is because he's someone who jumped in like completely in the deep end. He did this all blind. I actually spoke to him, funny enough, um, after he made this sale. And he was like, dude, I literally had not gone through any of the course. I just picked out the sales scripts, just got some calls booked and just tried to start selling people. And he was like, I was really worried that I was doing anything wrong. And I was like, this is exactly the attitude you have to have to succeed in this game. Nice. That's, have- that's so funny. Yeah. He was like, I thought I was doing everything wrong. I was really worried. And I was like, mate, I'm so happy you just said that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, well done, Will. Nice work, man. Well nice done. work. All right. So, uh, it actually leads us on to the topic of the day. Yes. I want to talk about Mr. Reid Hoff- Hoffman, co-founder of uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. He also wrote the book uh, Blitz Scaling, which is yeah. a good book. Uh, and he's famous for saying this, an entrepreneur is someone who will jump off the cliff and assemble an airplane on the way down. I love that quote. It's damn good. Assemble, assemble an airplane. It's not, you know, not a simple task. No, mate, it's, it's not. not. Not a simple task. You have to have some serious engineering qualifications <laughs> to get that shit built out you know what i'm saying and uh yeah that's a good quote man it is a good quote i like it a lot yeah this that's is something it. that you did a while ago right uh, you jumped well, off a cliff you built an airplane on the way down i would say you asking you want my story is that what you're asking for yeah tell tell us about it because james you left a corporate job yeah cushy cushy corporate job yeah 20, 2015 2015 mate 2015 bloody hell mate and uh six years ago at the end of this year yeah you dived in you dived in deep. Yeah, man. Dived in straight into that. You had to build things as you went. A lot of things as I went, yes. Y- you had qualified as a trainer? Is that... You'd, yeah, so you'd done the BTN? Yeah, what happened was I was working my corporate job in London. This was in 2015. And whilst I was working that job, I just decided I was going to do a personal training qualification. Yeah. And also my nutrition qualification. And Mr. Ben Coomber was there by his side on, he the, was. on the podcasts. He was indeed. Yeah, on your way list, on I was to work. I was going to work, and then the more time I spent in work, and some of you guys might relate to this, I was spending less and t- less time focusing on my work, and more and more time focusing on my side hustle. So I'd rock up to work with my headphones in, and I'd be listening to like a podcast on nutrition or personal development, and I was like, oh, just trying to do my work at my laptop kind of thing before everyone came into the office, and I'd take my headphones out. So anyway, I was getting really passionate about this, and I tried to build an online nutrition business, and I used the word tried because I had a website. So I had an online business. Hey, you had a nice website. Yeah. I, I, nice, I remember that website. That I had a nice nutrition web- website. I spent like ages on Wix building this website. And I had three clients paying me 50 bucks or 40 pounds, 50 bucks a month. Nice. Where anyway. did they come from? Were they friends? Uh, they were friends, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. they did come from the website. <laughs> no, they didn't come from the website. <laughs> so I must have had that website up for about six months and it did absolutely naffle. But it looked great. And I used to update it every single uh, night when I got home from work. Oh, it was every Literally night? every night. I'd be like, oh, I just Shit. want to make it a little bit better. Just, oh, man. It was wow. like what I would do in the evenings was update my website. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so funny. Shit. And it produced absolutely naffle. It was, yeah, it was pointless. Wow. But anyway, so it got to the point. I ended up going to a music festival. Hey. Getting absolutely smashed. Steamboated. Absolutely steamboated. Uh, five Day Bender. Some of you guys might recognise the festival. It's in the Isle of Wight. Uh, well, that's all I'll say. Oh. Um, yep. Some of you might know. Some of you might not. Got hammered. Came back from that. And then I went to work. I took a day off. Then went to work on like a Wednesday. I think it was the 16th of September. 2015 oh. to be precise. Oh, here we it. go. Here we go. I remember waking up. 5am. Getting in the car. Driving down to work. Got into the office. And obviously no one there because I used to get there super early to do my reports and stuff. And I remember just opening up my laptop and plugging it into the 
the monitor and then open up the spreadsheet and it was all the all the cells on the spreadsheet were no longer square. <laughs> they were pretty wavy. Yeah. Yeah, and the numbers and the and the letters and stuff were just falling around on the screen. I was like, oh, really struggling. I already had my bulletproof coffee. That was in the day when I used to have bulletproof Aye. coffee. I had that. And uh, anyway, so I was working for like 30 minutes and then my headphones in, just listening to music. And then my manager taps me on the shoulder and he's like, you're all right, mate. How was it? And I'm like, don't feel good, dude. And he's like, you don't look good, man. And I'm like, I really don't look good. I know. And he's like, all right, I'll get the coffee. So you get on. So uh, he goes off to get the coffees, comes back like 10 minutes later, hands them over to me. I take a sip of it. And I'm just like, I'm just like, mate, I've got to go home. He's like, yeah, mate, go home. So uh, I grab my bag. This is like 7.30 in the morning or something. Grab my bag. I walk out the office, um, back down the elevator, down, down to the ground floor, get in my car. And then when I sit in my car, I was like, I'll check the traffic because it's now getting to rush hour to get home again. Because it's like an hour drive back to my parents where I lived at the time. And I was like, all right, I better check the traffic. But whenever you pull out your phone, what do you typically end up on? Facebook. Facebook. Instagram. So I ended up on Facebook. It was, I guess Instagram was around then. It, it wasn't, wasn't wasn't as big. Yeah, it had yeah, the yeah. old logo with the, the the actual camera on it. Yes, exactly. It would have been then. Yeah. So I ended up on Facebook, and I've been following this business mentor for a while. I just saw this sponsored ad from him, sponsored post saying yeah. uh, it was a business event. It was like three days, turn your business and life around. So I clicked on it, and it was like five hundred pounds for a ticket, and it was also in Bath, where my cousin lived. And I was like, oh, this is good. And I looked at the date, and it was two weeks away. I was like, oof. This is good. I'm in this like solid come down state after just getting on it for the last five days. And I was just like fed up with work, fed up with everything. I was like, fuck it. I'll just buy a ticket. So I just bought a ticket in the car and then drove home. Didn't think much else about it. And then two weeks later, I obviously go to the event and my whole mind's just blown. That's when I realized I'm like, hang on a second. You can make legitimately £10,000 a month from having an online business. That's nuts. And he was actually selling, wasn't online businesses, how to build them. It was how to build studios yeah. and, how, and how to build high ticket offers for in-person coaching. Yep. So anyway, I had this crazy idea that I'd be able to make that all work online and uh, went through this three-day event with him, got to the end and I was like, how much is it to join your program? And he's like, $8,000 because he was moving to the States at the time. He's like, it's $8,000. I'm like, well, I've got $500 or equivalent. Will that do to start? And he's like, no, that'll be a deposit. I'm like, all right, take my $500. I'll get the rest. And he's like, you do know you've got to get the rest in 30 days. Otherwise the deposit window is over. I'm like, okay, no problem. And then as I get in my car, something clicked in my head. He said to me at the event, he's like, if you're going to be successful in business, you need to go all in and you need to make big decisions and you need to set up your life for success. And I was like, I was just thinking this as I was driving home from this event. So it was down in Bath and I live in Milton Keynes. So on the way, I go through uh, London, Watford, where my girlfriend at the time lived. And I was like, oh, I should really break up with my girlfriend. <laughs> I should really break up with my girlfriend. So legit, I'm driving back and I decide to stop off at her house, drop in and sitting on her bed. And then I'm like, just let her know I've been at this event and I was going to break up with her. And she couldn't, she couldn't understand what was going on. But obviously in my mind, I was like, she's part of the crowd that I don't want to be part of anymore because it's you know toxic people. It's not going to help me build the business. Uh, so I ended up breaking up with her, which was a very, very weird thing. And then she was like, that guy, he's brainwashed you. And I'm like, yes, he has. <laughs> in, my, in my head, I'm like, yes, he has. <laughs> Uh, she was like, you've changed and he's brainwashed you. And I'm like, you're right about both of those things. Thank you very much. Oh, shit. So I get in the car and then I start driving <laughs> home to, to my, my parents' house where I lived. And then I get to my to my dad's um, office and I drop in. And I'm like, oh, I need seven and a half thousand dollars here. How am I going to do it? So I walk in and for some reason, I just confidently proclaim, dad, I need seven and a half thousand dollars. And he's like, what? Why? And I'm like, well, you know, this event I've just been to. Yes, I know this event you've been to. But it's $8,000. I've already put 500 down. I need 7,500 more. Now, this is important for everybody because everyone thinks that my dad paid for my first mentor and therefore he paid for my success. Here's the thing. My dad eventually said yes to the $7,500. But here's what he said. He goes, here's my credit card. You need to get that off in the next seven days. And I'm like, no worries. I'll make that happen. So off I go with my dad's credit card. I go up to my room and then I had this master plan. And this is why I just told you this little sidebar here. It's because I was going to put it on my own credit card. But if you've ever put money on your credit card and you don't pay it off within the 30 days, you pay interest. However, there's things called balance transfers on credit cards where you can pay nothing for 12, 24 months, depending on the card. So I had a, a certain credit provider, remain nameless. And I was like, well, I need to increase my credit limit on this provider. So I, I basically went on the website. I may have or may not have fabricated how much money I earned to got a larger credit limit. <laughs> and then uh, I uh, got the credit limit approved there on the spot, rung up the assistant of this mentor and paid the seven and a half thousand with dad's card. Boom. 
and then straight to the website, transferred it across to, to my card. And there you go. Money's off my dad's card. It's on my card. Here I am. No idea how to build this business. I've got a website that does absolutely naffle. Got three clients charging me, charging, what, 40 pounds a month. Yeah. And now I've got seven and a half thousand dollars on a credit card that I've got to pay off. Strong. What else can I do? Quit my job. So then I'm sitting on, <laughs> literally, this is all within minutes. I've got my laptop out and I'm like, I've got to go by all in this. So I've ditched my girlfriend, put all this money on a credit card. I should quit my job. So I, I've got more necessity to to really work for this. So I write out my le- resignation letter, press print. And obviously this is in the day of what well, still is today, Wi-Fi printers. So it comes out the uh, the printing tray in my dad's office. who's just given me this card like an hour and a half ago. And he comes screaming up the stairs. Like, James, what's this? <laughs> my letter of resignation. And bear in mind, I wasn't working like a grocery store. Like this is like a serious company, like a Fortune 500 company. Like my career was matched, mapped out. So my dad goes ballistic. He's like, just give me all this money. What are you doing? Quit your job. It's the worst time of the year. It's about to be Christmas. All this stuff like going bad at me. He's like, no, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. That was it. Took the, took the letter of resignation, handed it in. Savage. And there we go. The rest is literally history. Yeah. That is the deep so, end. Some interesting shit that you said. It's not shit. Interesting points that you shared there. Like how, I mean, looking back on it from the perspective that we have now, like when you said how your girlfriend was like, oh, you've been brainwashed, you know? Yes, I have. <laughs> like, it's crazy, right? I didn't say that, but in my head, I was obviously yeah. aware of what... And like, I think about this now, like how I went through a similar, a similar experience when I was on my third business, two failed businesses that did not work beforehand, t-shirt businesses. My third business, I ended it with, with the girlfriend that I was with at the time. Because I believe that the relationship was holding me back from 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 pushing forward. I was brainwashed. I was fully brainwashed into this way of thinking. And when I think about it now, like I'm I'm so happy that that happened, right? Yeah. You think about it like it was a good thing for me to be brainwashed because the the reality is you're already brainwashed. Yep. You're brainwashed by doing things a certain way. Like when you do your personal training qualification, you get brainwashed into following the. The, the the protocol of charging 40 pounds an hour or whatever it is and selling blocks of 10 and all that kind of stuff. But to unbrainwash yourself, you have to brainwash yourself with other stuff, the stuff that you actually want, stuff that actually is going to move you forward to the stuff that you want, right? Yeah, that's you're the either, key. You're either consciously being brainwashed or unconsciously being brainwashed. And that's the decision you have to make. Yeah. Like yeah. you're feeding your mind with things consci- consciously to change your thoughts or you're just going to allow the world around you to dictate how you think. So... Be yeah, smart about your brainwashing. It's a great story. I would love to know what, because I mean, it's, it's funny actually. I don't, I don't share mine because mine's so similar, so similar to this. But obviously, I didn't get into to building a fitness business. However, um, I remember actually I messaged you at the time. I remember I messaged you. I was doing uh, some cold outreach on Facebook, <laughs> and you were one of my prospects. It was so it was funny. On your hit list. <laughs> yeah, for Facebook ads. Hey man, you want some uh, Facebook ads ready for you? Yeah. What I didn't, what I didn't tell you is a result of those actions was what allowed me to go and grow so quickly. Yes. Because I literally went from selling a 40 forty pound program to selling a thousand pound program, which quickly went to fifteen hundred pounds. We did the mass earlier on a two thousand. It was like I don't know forty x increase in price. But the fact that. I had burnt all the bridges and tried to create a new life, meant I had to succeed. Like yep. the necessity was so great. Yeah. Because like my ego wouldn't have let me fail. Because I couldn't go back to my old friendship group or things like that who I've just burnt bridges with and be like, screw you, I'm doing this kind of thing. Truly threw myself in the deep end. Now I yep. do want to say, like, just for everyone listening, if you have children, don't do what I did. <laughs> if yeah. You, if you have dependents, then you have to be a little bit smarter about raising necessity, but you still need to raise necessity. Just because you have children doesn't mean that you don't have to take risks. Like, I haven't got children, but my belief is if you have someone else who's dependent upon you, you have a duty of care, a duty of service to give them the best life possible. And you're not going to give that to them if you're just trying to be safe and protect everything around you all the time. Yeah. So you're going to have to take some risk. But anyway, the point is I took all the risk and I did uh, the first month under that mentor did £3,000, second month £5,000 and the third month £8,000, which was $10,000, literally from £150 a month to $8,000 in a month. Yeah pretty crazy obviously all this happened super fast for you right if someone if someone's listening and they're like in a position where they're like they've got this side hustle going on like what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome in transitioning from corporate into being an online like for just running that business like what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome because i know a lot went down the biggest challenge is it's tough because because i went in so hot like hot and heavy it literally felt like this was my only shot 
Like it was, it was a very weird feeling. Like I was doing, I was working crazy hours. I was legit working like 16 hours, like legit. I know when was I was 16, I was legit working 16 hours a day, like ridiculous. And I worked that way for a long, long time because I had no other option, man. Like I just burnt so many bridges. And I was just like, I'm gonna do the work, I'm gonna do the work. And the funny thing is the mentor I had didn't really teach me much other than how to sell high ticket. So I didn't really know how to get leads and how to do things. So I was just trying to figure it out on the fly. And I've told this story before, I'd end up in coffee shops, trying to sell people in coffee shops or on a gym floor where I've been trying to pick up clients on a gym floor to sell into an online program. Like wh whatever I could to make it work. And I just think that's important. And people will misunderstand that, that necessity that you have to have to succeed in business. Yeah. Did you think about it as a business? I just saw that I had to make a certain number of sales every single week and month. And then once I'd done that a few times, I understood how many leads I would have to generate every week and month as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I became relentless in chasing those numbers. So yeah. in that context, yes, I began to think about it. Yeah, yeah, business. yeah. Yeah, nice. So it wasn't just like, you know. It wasn't do nice things. It suddenly yeah. became cash. Yeah. Like I became so focused on making money. Yeah. That was it. And some people were like, oh, you should be focused on serving people and that. Well, that's great. You'll stay broke for a long time and you'll serve maybe 50 to 100 people in your lifetime. Like you're never going to be able to truly create impact. So I became so focused on sales skills, sales skills, sales skills, and just getting in front of people. Like, I'd speak to anyone about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I just, my whole identity became Naked Nutrition. It became the company that I had. Like every party, everything that I'd go to, every meetup, I'd end up trying to prospect and talk about what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Thank you. But like based on like, obviously now, you and I and the company, we've coached hundreds, thousands of trainers, uh, people to move online. We've ho probably coached probably close to hundreds of people going from full-time jobs into their yep. full-time business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on what you've learned about coaching these people, would you have done anything differently? Or would, if you were, if there was someone else in the exact same position, because you probably wouldn't have done anything differently, right? Obviously, for me, whenever I look at the past, I'm like, I would not have changed anything. It was, it was solid. There may be a couple of things. Um, but would you say that if you went to the past or if there was someone else in that exact position, would you recommend they do anything different based on what you know now? Yes, I would. Uh, there's a couple of things I would do. I would try and build an online following sooner. Right. And actually start giving away content and training far more readily than what I did back then. Back then I was in this mindset of like, I can't give anything away. Like I felt, you know, I can only give a little bit away. Whereas I think in today's world, you want to try and you want to try and over deliver as much as you can with your free content. Yeah. You want them to get a result in advance because it's a different marketplace now, especially if you're selling online. There's so much competition. There's so many people around that people have to trust you. And the best way to build trust is to get results above all else. So if you can build some kind of free training, free material, worksheets, whatever it is that someone can actually use and they want to use, uh, and then they get a result from that. That's, a, that's incredible and I didn't do that. So I ended up having to do a lot of hustle and really work hard on sales to overcome yeah. the fact that I wasn't really nurturing or indoctrinating my prospects before I spoke to them. Nice. Yeah. I like that, that's that made it a lot easier. Like I worked really hard on my sales game and that's the only reason I was able to do what I did. Yeah. Like most people, if they tried to do what I did and didn't put as much time into their sales game, they wouldn't make it work because they're trying to sell cold prospects online stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the biggest things that you learned in sales at the time that were like new to you? Because um, were you familiar with sales no, before? Not at no, all. you weren't. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. The biggest thing is if you can truly get on someone's level and understand their pains and stretch their pains and really pull back all the layers and just keep pulling them back, pulling them back and get to the root cause of why they are unhappy as a person, why they've reached out for help. And you can really dig into that. You'll, you'll close deals. Yeah. That was it. I remember you saying Tony Robbins was a big... Yeah, proponent of uh, helping you I, I, with so, frameworks, right? Yeah, so I was working like 16 hours a day. I was watching probably about two to three hours of Tony Robbins a day as well. Like legit <laughs> two on to YouTube. three hours a day. Legit on just YouTube, <laughs> was just crazy. constantly watching Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, understanding how to communicate properly, like even like tonality of voice. Yeah. Uh, like being able to alter your voice and your word choices and things like that all became yeah very important. Yeah, something that's interesting, especially with online sales, I've noticed in, in terms of phone, over the phone, online and over the phone, in this kind of industry of health and fitness and, and you know, someone to change their life, you know, you have to tap into that, that kind of information of understanding how do you help someone change their mindset, and change their thinking. Yep. And like a lot of people can do that through physical movement and, and their bodies and, and all that stuff. But like the most powerful tool that you can learn for sure is psych psychology. Yep. Like how to communicate and help someone change their psychology. And that's 
one of the most powerful things you can do in sales, right? Yeah, literally all of my, when I used to sell in person, because I started selling in person for an online program, like I sold from a coffee shop, I used to go to the same coffee shop. And I used to have like, you know, six people in one day, like just coming into the coffee shop. Lining up, mate. Lining up, literally lining up. I'd catch eyes, they'd catch eyes with me, I'd be still trying to sell someone, take payment. <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, back in this coffee shop. I used to draw out diagrams. Like, which I'd learned from Tony Robbins, like on a, like a piece of A4 paper, and I'd be teaching them like why they feel a certain way, their belief patterns that are holding them back, all this kind of stuff. And that's what allowed me to close the sales because they had these epiphany moments, yeah. much more powerful than being like, well, imagine if you just ate less calories, what it would be like for you. Like people are like, yeah, what yeah. does that mean? But I could get them a breakthrough in that moment and then they would trust me. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Breakthroughs are huge, man. Like I remember, I remember that was, that was, that was same for me. Like mm-hmm. you probably experienced this right when you when you first get into personal development and you have like a breakthrough, you just want to tell everyone about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to tell everyone about it. And if you can learn how to actually systematically teach someone that, and actually do it in a in a, a conversation that is about you trying to win someone's business, you can build huge amounts of trust in a short period of time, right? Yep, that's literally what I did. There we go. Anyways. Awesome stuff, man. <laughs> awesome stuff. Thanks, man. Would you like to add anything? No. No? no, I'd like to add that I hope you guys have an amazing 2021 20, yeah. and actually use some of this information that we've got going down. Like. Absolutely, yeah. I appreciate you sharing your story because, I mean, I've heard it a lot of times. I've heard it a lot of times, <laughs> but it's uh, it's always great. And I hope you enjoyed it today because it's one of those things. Sometimes you might be listening to this podcast and we're, you know, we're sharing information, we're sharing ideas and topics and content, and we're really trying to share the, the tools and the structures and the frameworks and ideas that can really help you build a business. But... Um, Sometimes it's just a story. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a story that you need to hear. And, you know, if you'd like to hear more stories about the journey along the way, obviously we, we talked a little bit about that at the new year and our journey from in uh, inside of 2020, but there's a lot more. There's, a, there's, there's huge amounts of stories for us to share from other clients. If you'd like to hear more of that, if this was helpful today, let us know in the comments. Yeah, 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 and comments. if you liked it, of course, hit subscribe, ring the bell. We'd, we'll be doing plenty more of these episodes and we've plenty more people sharing their stories this year. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm out.